That's me, Lance. I tie flies and I'm the creator of this channel. Today I'm tying a clown shoe caddis. I must be a fish because the way Jay Zimmerman utilizes McFly foam and the de-ribbing on this pattern got my attention and now I'm hooked. If you are new to my channel or just haven't done so already, subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new content. That's me and this is my vice. To tie a clown shoe caddis, a size 14 TMC2487 will need to be fed to the jaws of my vise. The thread used to tie this pattern is all of 8 out unit thread, which will be started at the front of the fly. When the thread is secured to the shank, cut the thread tag from the fly and wrap it to halfway down the band of the hook, then back to just in front of the hook point. Next, cut a few inches of small, clear D-rib from a strand. And with the tip of the D-rib sitting flat side up just over the hanging thread, and barely leaning to the near side of the shank, secure it to the hook with tight wraps of thread. Then slightly stretch the D-rib along the back of the fly and tie it down with tight wraps of thread to where the thread underbody ends. Once the D-rib has been completely tied down to the hook, wrap the thread back up the shank to the D-rib's tie-in point. On the way back up the shank, be sure to cover any exposed D-rib with thread that was missed on the way down. With the thread hanging at the D-rib tie-in point, throw a half hitch on the thread onto the hook and then stretch the D-rib just a bit and begin wrapping the D-rib with budding wraps up the shank by rotating the jaws of the vise. When the D-rib reaches just in front of the hook point, stop rotating the vise and tie off the D-rib with tight wraps of thread. Then without cutting the thread, carefully trim the excess D-rib from the fly. Now cut a clump of yearling elk hair from the hide and clean out all the short hairs and under fur from it. Once the elk hair has been cleaned, place the clump into a stacker, tips first, and then gently pound the stacker against the hard surface to even the tips. Gently hold the stacker at a horizontal position and pull the bottom part of the stacker from the top. The elk hair should be sticking out of the top piece of the stacker with evenly stacked tips at the bottom. Take the stacked elk hair and measure it just over a shank long. Place this measured point over the fly, where the thread is hanging, so the butts hang over the front of the fly and the tips flow over the back. Pinch the hair to the shank and wrap two light wraps of thread around the butts of the hair. Then while still pinching the hair to the shank, pull down on the bobbin to secure the hair to the hook. After releasing the hair, the butts will be somewhat flared. Cut the elk hair butts from the fly so that the butts are angled from the shank to the top of the elk hair. After the elk hair has been trimmed, gather the elk hair tips into the thumb and index finger of your bobbin hand, and with your material hand, wrap a couple wraps of thread around the base of the hair. Then release the hair and cover the butt ends of the elk hair with thread so that the thread is somewhat tapered from where the elk hair is tied down to the hook shank. Once the elk hair is tied in, wrap the thread to about halfway between the eye of the hook and where the elk comes out of the thread wraps. Next, prepare a grizzly saddle hackle feather that has been sized to the hook by pulling the back quarter to 3 8 inch of fibers from the butt of the feather. Then tie in the feather so that the tip of the feather sits at the eye of the hook and the rest of the feather flows towards the back of the fly. Now cut about a one and a half inch strand of tangerine McFly foam from a bundle and secure it to the shank at its center with a few wraps of thread. After the McFly foam has been tied in on the shank, lift both halves of the McFly foam from the fly, forming a post, and wrap a few wraps of thread around the base of the McFly foam.
when the post has been created, wrap the thread to where the elk hair comes out of the fly once again. And take a bit of black superfine dubbing from a dubbing container. Twist this dubbing to the thread and wrap the dub thread around the shank to a bit behind the eye of the hook. Repeat this process as many times as necessary until a nice thorax has been built. When completed, the thread should be sitting at the front of the fly. Now that the thorax has been dubbed, wrap the hackle around the thorax behind the McFly foam three or four times and then wrap it in front of the McFly foam three or four times. After the hackle is tied off with a few tight wraps of thread, carefully cut the excess hackle from the fly. Then apply a bit of head cement to the thread, whip finish the fly with a couple three turn whip finishes and cut the thread from the fly. Then pull up on the McFly foam, stretching it a bit, and cut the McFly foam just above the hackle tips. To complete the clown shoe caddis, trim the hackle fibers to the bottom of the thorax under the fly. This is a clown shoe caddis. The clown shoe caddis is a J. Zimmerman pattern. His fly is durable, floats high, and floats for a long time, even with a heavy fly hanging from it. What more can be asked from a dry fly? If you enjoyed this demonstration of the clown shoe caddis, check my playlist of other dry flies at the top right or let YouTube decide on something for my channel by selecting the video below that. Don't forget to like Fishbaits Flybox on Facebook or to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching. Now go feed your vice.